Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You. Today we have an absolutely incredible individual who has built an organization from scratch and I'm sure all of you have heard of the organization. It's called Ferns and Petals. Pavan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Pavan has spent, started working when he was only 16 years old and has spent time in the steel forging business. Um, he worked as the factory head of an ancillary uh, of Tata Motors. And then 17 years ago, he joined Ferns and Petals. Pavan, uh, what an amazing transition from steel to flowers. Tell us a little bit about your early journey. Okay, so I started working uh, right after my higher secondary and uh, the family circumstances were such that yeah, I had to do that. And the first job was in a, a factory which used to produce steel forgings for Indian Railways. And this is 1986. While I was working for that company, I also used to part time in terms of a consultancy company uh, in the evenings. And uh, the owners realized that within three months I had learned how to create a project report which included uh, profitability, cash flow, working capital requirement, and so does the balance sheet that they fired me by the fourth month because this guy is going to start up his own venture. Okay. So that is to talk about uh, steel forging. Uh, being for a couple of years in Jamshedpur, I moved on to Calcutta and then I was transferred at the age of 21 to Delhi to set up a steel forging plant at Behrod in Rajasthan. And uh, that was to do with uh, Again, uh, with the Rajasthan government and supplying it to railways. Mm -hmm. So, post which, at that point of time, I got married and shifted back to Jamshedpur and started the best innings of my life uh, working for a Tata Motors ancillary. Uh, this was in early 93. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be surprised to know that within a month of joining the organization, I realized that nobody really assigns me any kind of work and there is very little action happening on ground. So, I learned that ki the turnover which we are doing is less than the principal and the interest outgo which has to go to the <laughs> lenders, which uh, made me realize yeah. ki if we if I don't start measuring up, if I don't start doing stuff, so we, I'll be in trouble. And I was newly married. So I suppose those were the best 25 months of my life, wherein uh, almost from a negligible turnover, mm -hmm. Building up the turnover, getting machines on finance from uh, banks, when banks refuse going to NBFCs, getting money from them, or for that matter, raw material from Sundram Fasteners, Bangalore, uh, creating three shifts to continuous working from one shift, uh, getting working capital from bank, getting subsidies from uh, Bihar government, and, and pushing everything possible to achieve whatever we had set out for, and after the end of uh, two years, we were making money and passing on dividend to the promoters. Wow. So but that's been... Uh, so you must have been very valuable to the promoters. Why did they let you go? So there were three partners in this this, uh, this company I'm talking about. However, they did not let me know. One of the directors uh, shifted me to start up a new plant in Tata Motors, of Tata Motors in Lucknow. Mm -hmm. So there I again set up a unit from scratch in Lucknow and which supplied again steel machine parts to Tata Motors Lucknow. So that was another journey for six years, how the company being the same, the promoters being the same. I was there for six odd years. There again was a very beautiful journey, mm -hmm. starting something from scratch and then making it profitable and running it. Wow. And then now from steel to flowers, what an ironic kind of transformation. Right. How did that happen? So, uh, Vikas is a very old friend of mine since Calcutta days and I'm talking about 1990. And uh, he's the founder of the company and uh, he got in touch with me in 90, uh, I think 2001 and said, Ki, why don't you come and join us to do this? And uh, I joined in August 2001. I, I, I believe whether it is steel forging or flowers or anything else, the fundamentals of the business remain the same that you have to grow the top line and ensure that the bottom line is 20% plus. Mm. So that's what everyone strives for. And uh, 
I, 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 the product change, it took me a year or two to catch on to it. But eventually, since the rules of the business remain same, I, I was able to do it pretty. Fascinating. So how does the dynamics of the flower business work? I mean, you know, here is a, a market that used to be completely in the unorganized sector. Uh, from what I have heard, early morning, or maybe even 2.33 in the morning, you have to be at the Monday, buy the flowers, have them fresh. And then the, the business closes by the time sun, the sun rises. How, 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 what are the dynamics of this business? So, Ferns and Petals slash Vikas, he, no, he also started the Monday you described. Okay. So around uh, 25 years back, 28 years back, mm -hmm. when he shifted to Delhi, he started creating a flower mandi and he was one of the founder members of the flower Delhi flower mandi, Incredible. wherein flowers were procured. Mm -hmm. How to talk about the flower business, flowers primarily in India comes from uh, moderate climates like Bangalore and Pune and part of them comes from hills. Uh, these flowers are coming into flower mandi and from there they get distributed to the various tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Mm -hmm. Ferns and Petals in 94 started with a single flower shop, keeping in mind that we need to move flowers from footpath to an air-conditioned showroom mm -hmm. and provide some brilliant designs and ideas through which a customer starts appreciating and you start valuing that ki, these guys can deliver what I have in mind. So, once it started from there, we realized uh, somebody comes to us a year or two later and asking, ki, hey, you do such a beautiful flowers, why don't I open a branch of yours in uh, in the city? Mm -hmm. And uh, all you need to give me is a guy who can do up the flowers the way you do it. And that is how franchising started for us. Yes. And uh, today we are wherever we are. Okay. So you mentioned that, you know, you joined the company in 2001. And then I was reading about you and you said that in 2002, you lost almost your entire management team and yet you had to rebuild. What happened and what did you do to rebuild? So, uh, it was in 2007, okay. not in 2002. Okay. And by 2007, we were a significant force in online e-commerce at that point of time, whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, we had a general manager who used to look after this business and I had started delegating them. And I was in China traveling to buy some stuff and I get a mail from him saying that I have resigned. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Just design, design. And two days later when I land up in India, I realized nobody has turned up in office oh. for the online world. So this guy had uh, decided to move with the entire team and set up his own business, similar business, taking away all the customers and uh, the entire technology and know-how and the vendor details and blah, blah, as you know. However, I believe that was a blessing in disguise. We, of course, got one or two guys back and pulled in people from other divisions. We ensured that the day-to-day -day work did not stop. But within a year, we were able to realize key the major shortcoming and loopholes which were not evident at that point of time, running the business from outside. We acquired newer technology. And uh, from 2007 onwards, I think we have been able to take off to a growth trajectory which was never before. Yes. So that, that was wonderful that he left and uh, mm. we were able to restart the business from scratch. So, you know, obviously you have the reputation of being a good and a strong man manager. What are some of the ingredients that go into building a good team? Very interesting. I believe. Uh, and one learns every year, sure. after every hire, after every year, you, you mature with your thoughts. I realized that identifying the correct person and that person will come across you anywhere in life. So my retail CEO used to meet me in 2002-03 from some other organization selling me something else. And I, I told him, okay, whenever you want to leave, do join us. So that's one method of hiring, that identifying the correct person mm -hmm. and then asking to come on board. So we have had, we have all the CXO level of people which we have today. Once you meet them, you realize that they are good people. Before they join us, we show them that hey, and we we conduct a very intensive uh, sessions wherein we make the person realize that hey, this is what you are expected to do. Mm -hmm. Now let me take a couple of meetings online, offline, offsite, and once the person realizes. 
कि दिस इज वॉट ए गोल्स एंड आफ्टर दे जॉइन सेट ए वेरी क्लियर कट गोल्स कि दिस इज वॉट यू नीड टू डू एंड लिव इट ऑन द अदर पर्सन कोच मीट वंस अ डे और वंस अ वीक एज द पीरियोडिक रिक्वायरमेंट इज एंड लेट द अदर पर्सन परफॉर्म एंड आई वी हैव हैड पीपल हु हैव बीन विथ अस फॉर 15 इयर्स फॉर 17 इयर्स द यंगर जनरेशन आल्सो वी आर एबल टू रिटेन देम एंड द एवरेज एज ऑफ आवर एंटायर टीम ऑफ 400 इज समवेयर अराउंड 6 ऑड इयर्स व्हिच इज अमेजिंग एंड यू आल्सो मेंशन दैट यू नो यू आर अ ग्रेट बिलीवर इन डेलीगेशन एंड एम्पावरमेंट how does that work in a strong team i mean at what stage do you decide that i'm now going to hand over uh, and delegate everything and not only delegate but empower them as well and what what kind of parameters do you look for to ensure accountability so once you identify the correct resource mm-hmm. within 2 to 3 months we realize that the person is an absolute fit or is a medium fit where in which needs to be kept a watch upon if the person is an absolute fit all i do is once the goals are identified shared on a common sheet yeah and we thereafter set up periodical meetings wherein the review is happening and course correction is being done wherever required mm. and another couple of months when we realize ki this deliveries are happening as per expectation you leave with them more and more stuff so whether it is uh, for example my retail business head if uh, earlier i used to do the entire traveling the franchising now i haven't been uh, to anywhere except that he is running the entire show mm. so empowering him to take decisions and out of 10 two decisions do go wrong mm. three of them do not result into any kind of great uh, positivity mm. but overall if the person is able to deliver and keep aligned to the company's goal uh, we we allow a lot of freedom to people to work and uh, mm. achieve what they want and you do a review with them every month every few months so depending upon the intensity of the project the 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 importance the newness of the project it's as frequent as possible mm. and thereafter i also have meetings once in a month or for that matter once in a quarter which uh, depending upon how, how what is the need is wow yeah you know flaws is a product and you are the expert but as a consumer i mean you know flaws traditionally used to be something you gave on a few occasions but i think one of the achievements you've had is to actually change consumer behavior as far as flowers are concerned today flowers are not just given on a birthday etc but flowers is something which you carry to someone's house you know you give it on any occasion uh, you give it when you know when you are rewarding an employee what has started to change in the mindset of consumers in india as far as flowers are concerned flowers are something which will make you always have rest right. done matter the snobbiest or the most difficult guy it is or the gayest of the person will be happy mm. and flowers are very buff mm. to bring you an incident back in 2003 wherein i was trying to get online to a portal where i wanted to sell flowers and the lady out there said you know we are very happy with our current florist and we don't need you i sent flowers to her on first of every month saying ki dear x uh, we are still waiting to be called on board mm. have a nice day mm. it took exactly 6 months mm. but she called us we were there on board and we continued there forever there after Amazing. so flowers are very powerful i agree the today's uh, consumer has the discretionary spend he is quite aware yeah. and today if i had to come to your place mm. what should i bring you have yeah. everything well, yeah. the best way to express my feelings my happiness is flowers yeah. and uh, nobody says no to flowers mm. so that's clear we are and also uh, the i think with flowers there is something which i often refer to as perceived value so the perceived value of a flower is much greater than the rupee value so if you're going to spend 500 rupees or 700 rupees or 1000 rupees on a bouquet the recipient will perceive it as something much greater do you agree absolutely and uh, we have to live up to the expectation of a customer as to how do we ensure ki we not only deliver that but surpass that mm. so to do that uh, we are very conscious about the packaging which goes around to it the messaging which has to accompany the flowers the choice of flowers uh, these are couple of things which we which we are very careful and sensitive about paranoid about mm. that when the recipient gets the actual product they feel ki uh, this is priceless 
uh, say for example if uh, we deliver a flower and we do not deliver the message which has gone along with it it's worthless yeah so how do we how do we transfer that entire emotion of the sender to the recipient is the key here right uh, even the flowers if they are uh, 1% or 5% not up to the mark but if it is delivered prof- professionally politely with a very handwritten or printed message in an envelope that that's that's make the difference mm-hmm. in fact i have uh, always sent flowers to my wife on three occasions number one is on valentines day second is on uh, her birthday and third is on our anniversary and uh, she loves receiving and they always are from fnp thank you but uh, you know last few times i've discovered that you are now giving plants and my wife loves plants so i've now stopped ordering flowers i order plants live plants and she just loves them so uh, you'll be surprised to know though we are known as ferns and petals we sell more cakes than flowers i was going to ask you that also yeah yes and uh, we sell so much cakes that we realized that we need to have our own supply chain to deliver the best of the cakes possible and again ensure whereas as far as flowers goes it is only look and feel and smell here you also have to taste it so we set up our own fnp cakes as a brand and uh, today we are present in more than 25 cities which is covering about majority of our uh, volume and uh, we have we are delivering lots of lots of cakes thousands of cakes a day hmm. while all this is happening yeah. and the customers behavior evolving and everybody appreciating the the pollution the the perishable nature of the product that flowers end of the day last you only for x number of days we realized quickly that plants can also be a mm-hmm. huge factor here so we have around 20 25 different varieties of plants and uh, we have the capability of what you see on a website to be delivered in 100 odd cities in in, in a very short span of couple of hours across the country wow, wow. you know i i have used uh, ferns and petals for to deliver flowers and a cake in canada and i see that you have opened in dubai and singapore what is your experience working outside india as compared to uh, working in india how is the indian consumer different from an overseas customer so one is obviously the the ticket size which a customer is able to afford mm. than india so ticket size whether it is in uae or for singapore mm. is around four times compared to what, what you are able to afford in right india. accordingly the flowers which are being procured in uh, these countries mm. come either from holland or from africa yeah so they are a different breed of flowers they are at least the selling price of what i sell in india is the purchase price is higher in those countries mm. so that's the breed of flowers we are buying mm. the customer that is very uh, he differentiates between a good quality the services the the entire offering the style of what is delivered in those countries are very different mm-hmm. uh, from what is available in india yeah. we are also able to offer a couple of uh, flowers uh, deliveries with guitarists to go along with a flower mm-hmm. to play on the appropriate mm-hmm. occasion so these are a couple of differences mm-hmm. which is there in these countries fantastic so what is the secret sauce of ferns and petals what has made you uh, become so big so powerful and so successful what do you do differently that others do not we are we have around 300 plus partners across the country who are our backbone and who are the strength and that is who we are because of them plus our team we are super clear that whatever we will do in our core values we will do which makes money mm-hmm. and we will ensure that ki all our 300 partners also do make money and there is no and if someone is not making money we are there to step out we go twice a year to meet our partners across the country mm-hmm. and asking them is there anything we can do we make sure that the partners are happy they are making money similarly our entire team as you already asked they are delegated they are empowered they are rewarded mm-hmm. they are acknowledged so with these two team of people behind us mm-hmm. everything else falls in place whether you want to create a product you want to sell it you want to service it there's an after sales service everything falls into these two parameters mm-hmm. and that's how we are able to do and of course the founders vision wherein we we are going to be only in these many things mm-hmm. we, we we are not going to want to do everything mm-hmm. 
so it's just a reason why we are here today. Very interesting. Before I move into another subject, uh, you also mentioned that as a company, you work, you built the whole company only with your own own resources, no more private equity. Um, why is that uh, philosophy in the company? So uh, we are a zero debt company. We have no outside funding from anywhere, mm -hmm. and we are a profitable business. We we come from the traditional background of uh, promoters, wherein uh, we feel that if any 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 do, make sure that it makes money. Mm -hmm. we, we are not into the valuation game. We are here to make money. We are, and one only when we have money, this where we will invest. We will not borrow and invest. And if a business is not doing well, we are ready to walk out of the business in the appropriate given time. Mm -hmm. And th that is how our DNA is, and that is how we have built ourselves. And we are we are very happy in uh, whatever we are doing today. So wonderful. And that that's a blessing. Wonderful. And yet, when I look at what's happening in the country, uh, you know. Uh, I was reading, seeing when Prime Minister Modi now goes for any uh, meetings. Uh, he has said, "Just give me one rose, and not big bouquets of flowers, etc." Do you see the market for flowers changing or reducing? No. Very clearly, uh, there there are different occasions which which require different kind of expressions. When you are romantic, a plant or a cactus will definitely never make sense. Absolutely. When you are going for a wedding, it does not make sense. Flowers will always continue to being the primary business of plums mm. and petals. Mm. Uh, it, it's a way of expression, Ashdosh. That in, in whatever form you want to do, depending upon a small bouquet to a large arrangement to to a very exquisite, uh, exquisitely made arrangement. Flowers are always going to be there. Uh, there might be compulsions with somebody wherein he, they don't want to, or maybe there is too much of mm. flowers happening there, which one feels it's wastage. But for an individuals like us, mm. the best medium to express without any baggage mm. is flowers. So moving on, you know, you said you enjoy reading. What are you reading now? So I'm reading a book which is, I think, a couple of years old, which mm -hmm. is uh, "Gun, Germs, and Steel" by Jared Diamond. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am a history buff, and uh, I enjoy connecting the dots as to what has happened in the past. And uh, when I see the scope and expanse of what he has written, starting of Earth till today, uh, it, it gives me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. So. This one particular book I am reading, Jared. Wonderful. Wonderful. So 17 years with Ferns and Petals, and uh, talking to you, I can see that you know you're, you're as, as excited as you probably were 17 years ago. What keeps you going with such high energy in such a successful business? Money does not matter anymore. What matters is that we want to be known as. people who were the flower guys so tomorrow if anybody remembers us or said ki agar full bhejna hai to ferns and petals if it has to be cake it has to be ferns and petals if it is plants it's ferns and petals if it's personalized it's ferns and petals so we want to make sure that we are the people to be on the top of the mind remembered for these are the uh, original guys who hmm. Who kind of brought this business to where it is today, mm -hmm. and others to follow, mm -hmm. and uh, look at the zeal. You know, end of the day, I am here at your show, mm -hmm. wherein uh, speaking to you and uh, talking about this. So look where it has brought us. Absolutely. Why not? So you know, you mentioned you're from Calcutta. I don't know if you recall that old uh, Jensen and Nicholson line, which says, "Whenever you think of color, think of us." So I think exactly. that epitomizes exactly what you are saying. Whenever you think of flowers, yes. think of us. Or, Whenever you think of cake, think of us. Absolutely, hmm? absolutely. That's what we are striving. Very well said. Very well said. So I'm going to ask you a question that I ask all my guests um, because a lot of our listeners want to hear about our failures. So, Pawan, what are your learnings from your failures? So, uh, I, I try thinking about this in the past as well, and I realize 
most of what we have done, we have done with a lot of thought and careful planning. We have uh, not had such a large failure, which, uh, which can be mentioned here. However, on a personal front, and the only regret I have in my life is uh, I did not take care of my grandmother in the last days. Oh, wow. Okay. So that is, th that's something which I am not very proud of and I wish I could reverse that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't see anything which is which is a monumental failure or uh, something. Of course, there's a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. learning which happens, course correction which happens. Well, like, good luck. I hope you never have any failures. I mean, you know, sure. So my last question to you, you know, uh, there are, the whole startup ecosystem in our country is very exciting today. And thousands and thousands of young men and women are wanting to start up. You have done not, you've done not one, but three different startups from your steel days to your forging days to your flower days. What would your advice be to a startup entrepreneur? Whether it is Netflix, Amazon, Ferns and Petals, anything, starts with that single order, first order a day. Start with small. But make sure that that business is there for a reason to make money or to solve a problem. Mm. Don't start a business or get into something which is too uh, fee for a valuation game. Mm. The moment you are solving a problem and growing it gradually or fast, doesn't matter. But it has to make money at the end of the day. And that end of the day cannot be a couple of years, but it has to be one. Now, mm. two, you cannot do this alone. Have a team of people or maybe a co-founder who is supporting you in helping you, advising you, being a soundboard to do that. Three, have a mentor or a coach who can help you to guide whenever there is a peril at the inside. And uh, finally, get into this only when you have your adequate finances in place. I, I've seen a uh, lot of startups failing. Uh, within a couple of months when they start with a lot of zeal and they realize, you know, it does not uh, make sense. And uh, avoid being uh, copying somebody else's business. They are very good at it because the, the passion is, is the most important thing to make a business uh, be successful wherever it is. So these are, I think, are a couple of uh, yes. suggestions I would give to uh, yes. coming into the yes. Pavan, thank you very much. Your words of wisdom, your scope of experience, your successes. I'm sure all the, our listeners are really going to enjoy hearing this podcast. Thank you very much again for coming. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Brand Called You podcast. Be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation, access show notes and discover fantastic bonus content. You can follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Simply search for The Brand Called You. Thank you and see you next week.